If you're building an internal tool or a client portal in Glide, you need a way for your users to submit data, right? Whether a request, a dispute, or an update, Glide's native forms give you power, control, and structure. Hey there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get set up and automated using industry-leading portals, apps, and integrations. When you are starting out with Glide, the fastest and easiest way to allow people to interact with your data is to add a collection. By default, this means that users can select a button to either add or update the records in the connected database table. This is great for simple use cases like logging hours, adding tasks, or editing a note. And this might be all that you need, but there will be instances when you need more control. Perhaps you want submissions to go to a different database table, or you don't actually want your users to view or even edit the current data. Or maybe perhaps you want to trigger an automation or include custom logic in your flow. And that's where Glide's forms come in. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up Glide's native forms properly, the features, functionality, and power of Glide's forms, when you'll find that you're hitting those limits and when you'll need a form building tool for a smarter, smoother experience. So here we've got an app that helps teams manage construction sites. Within it, it's pretty straightforward. We've got our work tasks, our sites or job locations, and our team here. We can see that. Now, we will notice that we've got varying levels of authorization or roles in our team. A construction site supervisor, I imagine he has access to almost all of the info and data on a construction site, whereas a crew member shouldn't be able to see all that info. And that info I'm referring to are our data tables, our databases. Jumping back into the layout, we'll notice that within the tasks, we currently have our collection screen. So people can see all of those records currently. And we've also got it enabled if we select our collection component that our users are able to add items and also edit items. So if someone is in the app, whether on mobile or desktop, they'll be able to add new records, but they'll also be able to jump into a specific record, view that task, because it's the task database, and directly update the fields or the columns. Instead, we want to create custom pages so that we can configure who sees what, who can add records, and who can update records. Now let's look at a great use case example. We've got our database tables and within that we've got incident reporting. So rather than having a collection screen layout, I'll just quickly select that, where it will show all of our past incident reports, we want to create a form. That's how incident reporting should be managed. We should only have a select team or perhaps just one safety officer looking at the incident reports. So let's build that. We've currently got the incident reporting custom screen. Now you can't see any data because there isn't any current data within it, but let's create a form. So we'll delete this. We'll create a custom screen that I'm going to rename incident report form. And we're going to bring in a component. We'll search for form and we can bring in a contact form but we're gonna delete that for this video, we don't need that. Instead, we'll just add the default form container. And we'll notice the components here on the left side panel. We've got the form container, which will directly connect to a table or database. We don't want it to be checklist, we want it to be incident reporting. There we go. That's brought the columns directly in. However, we've only got issue ID, incident, date reported, and date of incident, and photo or video. Now we know that we actually have a couple extra. We got location, incident reporter. So we want to determine which columns the user can actually update and even see. Let's jump back into that layout. Now we'll want to select an individual component to be able to jump into the configuration of that component. I don't want the user to create an issue ID. We should have that generate automatically. So I'm just going to quickly delete that field. We've got the incident, the date reported, the date of incident, the photo or video. Now I will duplicate the incident so that I can bring in the person that reported this, the incident reporter. And I added another text entry field or column 
for the location. If we jump back to the form container, selecting that component, we'll notice that we can include values for each of these fields. We can pre-populate, pre-fill them. So for the date reported, rather than having our employee have to check their phone and look at what the date is, we can save them time. We can do that for them by dynamically pulling in the current date and time. Then what we can do is select that date reported field and actually apply conditional logic to determine when it is visible. Let's say you are creating a form and you only want a question or a column to be shown depending on how a person responded to previous question. This is how you'll do it. And make sure you keep watching because we will look at how to actually set up conditional forms. But for the visibility of the date of report, we don't want it to be visible because we are pre-populating. Here we've got our form. Add to incident reporting, the incident, the report of the location, date of incident, and a photo or video. So from there, when someone submits this form, the data will automatically populate our data table there, incident reporting. That was pretty straightforward, right? Let's continue looking at how we can push the functionality of native forms in Glide. Now, in this example, we have a customer portal. They're able to choose products, view their orders, and also we've just created a database table for their feedback. So once they purchase a product, we're able to understand what we could do better and how they feel about our products. In the layout, we're going to add a form screen like we mentioned earlier, and we want to show that it's the right table. Feedback will include, not the category, the customer name and the rest of those and create form. Now again, super powerful. You don't want to have to prompt your customer, your user, your submitter to actually input multiple details that they don't need to because we already know that we have that value. We have their customer email. We have their customer name. So if we just select customer name here and we scroll down to the user profile, name, customer email, we'll do the very same email and that there will be dynamic. It's going to show a different value depending on who is currently logged in and who is completing the form. But continuing on, we'll notice that this is quite a long one page form and perhaps you want to break it up into multi steps. Well, super simple. Instead of selecting a custom screen or a form screen, we actually had the option to include a multi step form. And here we can see the difference. Rather than the form container where we directly connect our form to a source or a database table, we have the step one container with personal questions, step two container, and a step three container. If I select the multiple choice field here, we can see that it directly connects to a database, one of our tables. And if we actually select our name field here on that step one, we'll notice that it actually connects to our folders and not our database tables. If you're new to Glide and you're still trying to work out what folders and tables and databases are in Glide, I've made sure to leave some helpful resources in the description of this video. So check those out. Something else that we need to discuss before talking about the limitations of Glide's native form builder is triggering automations and how you can do that through the form button. Now, earlier we discussed incident reporting. So here we've used a template that manages accidents and incidents. The form that we built earlier, well, that would just populate one of our database tables. Instead, we actually need to notify people and trigger some things to happen. Automatically, you bet. So from our new app, we're going to add a form screen and we're going to connect that to our incident table. I'll just leave it as a basic form because we're not too worried about this. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the form container and we're going to add an after submit action. So we'll select configure action and we're going to add a workflows for incidents. So we'll create a new workflow and from here, that's going to open up our automated workflow builder. Now it's here that we can add our step for what occurs after this form is submitted. We have flow, data, interaction, communication, but what I want to show you is integrations. Now, I'll make sure to leave in the description of this video some helpful resources to get you understanding how you can use automations in Glide apps. But from here, we can connect to our Slack channel and notify our team members. We can connect to DocuSign and send out a document. 
There are a whole heap of things that we can trigger to occur automatically after the form is submitted. And that goes beyond just updating our database table. So we've taken a look at how you can get started with native forms in your Glide app, but what about the limitations and when will you find yourself needing a specific form building tool? Glide forms are great for creating new rows, items, or records in a table, but your Glide form is limited to just one singular table in your app. So what are those limits of native Glide forms? Well, firstly, the data destination. You can only connect a single Glide table or database to a form. You also can't update existing records. And when it comes to more complex features and functionality like extensive complex conditional logic, calculations and scoring, extensive URL parameters and prefill capabilities and embedding in other apps and pages, well, that's not possible with Glide Forms. However, in saying that, as a native form for your app builder, it's an incredibly powerful and valuable tool. You'll find yourself upgrading from Glide Forms to a more powerful tool like Paper Form, Fill Out, or Jot Form when you need to update existing records, you want to control where your data goes, you need advanced complex logic, you want to pre-fill or personalize fields across sessions, you're embedding your forms elsewhere, or you want more in-depth integrations and automated workflow triggers. Well, I hope that's been a helpful video on how you can get started with native forms in Glide. If you need help setting up portals, apps and tools, or integrations and automations, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com, where our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation, so book yours today.